Okay, today we are going to be looking at the refreshments assignment. This is taking a blank Word document and creating a menu for a party or an activity of some sort. We will be entering in shapes. We will be creating tabs and setting tabs in our document. The first thing we need to do is open up Word. So I'm going to come down here to my Windows icon, and then I'm going to scroll down to the W's and find Word. Another way you can do this is just right here where it says type here to search, just type in Word, and it should be the first one that pops up there. So once we have Word going, we want a new blank document. So I'm going to select New, Blank Document. We need to make sure our non-printing characters are turned on. And we do that by coming up here to our paragraph grouping in Word. And we have this little backwards P. And if we click and click on this option, it toggles the show high printing characters on and off. It's a really good idea to have them turned on for this assignment so you can see where your blank lines are and where you're entering the information at. We also want to make sure that we are in the print layout view. So here under the view tab, clear over on the left, we can see we have a couple of options. Here's the read mode. This is uh, the best way to read your document. Um, if you don't have if you don't plan on adding anything to the document, you just want to read it, this is a really good way. Uh, print layout is the most common layout and view to use. It's how your document's going to look when you print it. You also have a web layout. If you have a document that you want people to be able to see on the internet, on the web, use the web layout. That way what you see on your screen is what people are going to see on the web. We want to make sure we're in the print layout view for this assignment. We also want to come in here and insert a horizontal scroll shape. So we're going to come up here to the insert tab and we're going to come here to the shapes. You see there's all signs of types of different shapes that we can use from. We're going to scroll down to the stars and banners and find the scroll horizontal shape. Once you have that selected, when you move your mouse over the your working area in your document, you can see it changes shape. Now we're just going to drag and put in our scroll. We can resize our shapes by clicking on one of the sizing handles. If you click on the sizing handles in the corner, it keeps everything in perspective. If you want to shrink it down, um, make it narrower, you want to use the side buttons. Anytime you see a round orange dot in a shape, that will actually completely change your shape. So if I click on this little shape right here, you can see I can actually make it look like it's more of a scroll shape. So those are kind of fun if you see those um, in your documents. Now we kind of took that all the way. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit the undo button because uh, I want to just take it back to the regular scroll shape that I just put in. Over here under my Shape Format tab, I have my height and width. So if I know exactly how big I want my shape to be, I can just come over here and enter it in. On my height, I want to be 2 inches. And my width, I want to be 6 inches. And let's see, then I want to position it in the top center. So up here in my arrange grouping I have this position option and the very first run in the first row under with text wrapping the center is position in top center with square text wrapping. So I'm going to choose that one and it's going to place my scroll at the top of my page in the center. I want to add some text to my scroll so I'm just going to click in it and then type in refreshments. Make sure you spell it correctly. It's going to automatically center it in our scroll. And now I want to change the font and the font size. So I'm going to double click to select my word. 
and here I have my quick access toolbar that pops up. I can come up here, I'm going to change it to Comic Sans. I'm going to change the font to 48, and I'm going to change my font color to black text one. I also want to make my outline red. So up here in my Shape Format tab, I have my Shape Fill, Shape Outline, and Shape Effects. I'm going to go to the Shape Outline, and I'm going to choose red. Then I'm going to go back to the Shape Outline because I want that outline to be heavier. Uh, so I'm going to come down here to the weight. The weight means how thick is your line going to be. And I want my line to be one and a half point. Finally, here in my shape, I want it to be yellow. So I'm going to come up here to Shape Fill, click on the little down arrow here, and come down here to my standard colors and choose yellow. Now um, I want to save my file. So I'm going to come up here to the File tab and do a Save As. The key with saving your items is making sure you remember where you save them. I'm just going to save this on my desktop and I am going to call it refreshments underscore Linda underscore sessions and save. I want to move my cursor I-beam to this blank line underneath my shape. You see it's blinking there next to my non-printing character. Anytime you see that backward P, that means you have hit the Enter key or you've entered a paragraph into Word. I want to put one blank line in my document right now. So I'm going to hit my Enter key to move my insertion point down one blank line. I already know I want my text to be Comic Sans. So I'm going to come up here to my font grouping and change this to Comic Sans. And then I'm going to change my font size to 16. So now that I have my font set and my font size set, I want to add tabs. Tabs are a way to enter your text. Uh, on your keyboard you see a tab key. By default, they are set to move every five spaces. So if I hit my tab key right now, you can see I have that little arrow there. That's a non-printing character, but that lets me know I've hit my tab key. So each time I hit my tab key, I have another arrow. By default, those are set to every five spaces. I don't want that though. I want my tabs to be set at the one and a half inch mark, the two inch mark, and the five inch mark. So to do that, I'm going to come up here to my paragraph grouping on my home tab, and I'm going to click on this little dialog box launcher right there in the corner. My paragraph menu box pops up. I'm going to scroll down to tabs. And the first tab stop position I want to create is 1.5. I want it to be left aligned. That means when my tab is there, the text is going to scroll over from the left. The leader down here refers to like the dots, like when you have a table of contents, you know, there's the chapter title, then dot, 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 page number. Those are actually called leaders. We don't want any leaders on this tab. Now we need to set the one and a half inch tab. See, we now have it down here. I also want a two inch tab. I want it to be left as well with no leaders. And I want to set that. The last one I want to set is a five inch tab. And I want this to be right. I want my text to flow from the right of my tab. And I want this to have leaders. I want it to have dots in it. So now I'm going to set. So I have those three tabs set. I'm going to say OK. Up here on my ruler, you can see I have now a left tab at the one and a half, a left tab at the two, and a right aligned tab at the five. Now, 
If you don't see this ruler on your screen, if you come up to the View tab, right here is where you can toggle that ruler on and off. We are now ready to enter in some text. So with our insertion point blinking in that last line, I'm going to hit the Tab key. You can see my tab moves over to the one and a half mark. I'm going to type hot dogs. I'm going to hit my tab key again, and now you can see I have all those dots in there. I didn't hit the period key. These are leaders. That's what they're called. And my hot dogs are going to be $2.25. So I want the dollar sign, $2.25. Hit enter, and I'm going to hit the tab key again, and put in my next item, which is chili dogs. My tab key. And chili dogs are $2.75. Hit the enter key, tab, knockwurst. Make sure you spell stuff right. Hit the tab key. And those are $3.25. I'm going to enter, hit tab. I'm going to hit tab one more time because I want people to know they can add kraut to their knockwurst. So I'm going to say add kraut, hit the tab key, and that's going to be 0.50 cents. Or I'm going to hit tab twice, they can add chili, and that again is 50 cents. And I'm going to hit the enter key after chili. And we're going to add some other items into our menu. I'm going to hit the tab key and type in chips. They're a dollar. Water or pop is a dollar fifty. Child size is dollar twenty-five. Single scoop is two dollars, and a double scoop is three dollars and twenty-five cents. So I have all of my items entered in. Now I'm going to make it look a little more appealing. So I'm going to put my insertion point in front of chips. I'm just going to come up here in front of the chips and click so my insertion point is blinking there. I am going to hit enter because I want a blank line here. In order to move chips back in line with everything else, I need to hit my tab key and it's going to move it back over so it's lined up correctly. I also want to put my insertion point in front of child size. Now I'm going to hit enter two times. So one, two, to put two blank lines in my document, I'm going to hit my tab key so everything lines back up again. I'm going to click on the empty line above child size. So right here I've got this empty line, the one that's right above child size. I want to change my font to 22 point. So I'm going to enter in some other information here. And then I want to center this because I want to type in ice cream. I want people to know that ice cream is available. Now I'm going to add some pictures to my document. So I'm going to add a picture of a hot dog, but I want this up at the top by my hot dog. So I'm going to put my insertion point up here right in front of the H in hot dogs. I'm going to come up to the insert tab and I'm going to say pictures. And if you have a picture of a hot dog on your computer, hey, that's great. You can use a stock image or online pictures. I'm going to go to online pictures and then I'm going to search for hot dog. So right up here in my online, online pictures, I'm going to say hot dog. And then I'm just going to choose 
one of these pictures. I'm just going to choose this first one. Whichever picture you want to choose is fine. I'm going to choose insert. And you can see it put the picture of a hot dog in here. But whoa, is it way too big. Couple things I'm going to do here. I want to format my picture so that it has the text wraps around my picture. So I'm going to come up here with my picture still selected. I have my picture format tool. I'm going to go to wrap text and I'm going to say square layout. The next thing I need to do is I need to resize it. So I'm just going to use this corner, the bottom right hand corner, and I'm just going to drag up to resize it. Because I want it to be over here by my hot dogs. And then I want to rotate it slightly. So I've got a little dancing hot dog. So there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'm going to come down here to my ice cream. But I want my ice cream cone to be on the other side of my document. So I'm going to put my cursor after the $1.25 in the child size. And now I'm going to insert a picture of ice cream. So I'm going to come up here to the Insert tab and go back to Pictures. I'm going to use the online pictures. This time I am going to look for ice cream. And I like this picture of a happy ice cream cone. I'm going to say Insert. And again, you can see it's really, really big. Um, I'm going to change first my text so it wraps in square around my picture. And now I'm going to resize my picture of my ice cream cone. Whoops. There we go. And I'm going to move it so it's over here in my next to my ice cream cone prices. And I am going to rotate it just a little bit, just give it a little more character. There we go. So you can move it around. So I have my picture of my hot dog. I have my picture of my ice cream cone. I'm going to come down here to my zoom, my zoom bar. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit just so you can see my entire page on my screen here. Now one thing I want you to do with this assignment is I want you to insert a footer. A footer is something that appears on every page uh, in your document, but this is just a way that you can put in your own personal information on this document. So you already have your name and the file name, but I also want you to add the footer. So you're going to come back up here to the Insert tab and come over here to where the header and footer grouping is at and choose Footer. And I want you to choose the blank three columns. In the left section of your footer, I want you to enter your name. In the middle section, I want you to enter refreshments. And in the right, I want you to enter the date that you are working on this. And I, it doesn't matter what way you format the date. You, know, you want to make sure, come up here and close the header and footer. We're going to come over here to File, and we're going to go to Print. Now, the reason we're going to print is because we want to make sure that this is only going to print on one page. If it prints on two pages, you might need to change your picture size of your ice cream cone or your hot dog. If you can see down here at the bottom, I'm on page one of one. You don't need to print anything. This just makes you aware that, yes, it is only one page in length. I'm going to come up here to my back arrow and I'm going to hit save. 
And now I am going to close my document and I am ready to submit it for grading. Hopefully you've learned some new things about tabs and creating tabs in your document and how to create them.